The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Dunkley, and I congratulate her on her admission to our parliament. I wish her all the very best. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Early one morning, September 1983, a sports-loving and somewhat argumentative nine-year-old girl was utterly convinced that her new Prime Minister had just given her an ironclad argument to stay home from school that day. <laughs> hey, Mum, I said. You know how you always say you're the boss of me? Well, if you try to make me go to school today, you're a bum. <laughs> Turns out that line that worked so well for Bob Hawke, not so much for me. <laughs> Off to school I went. He didn't get me out of a day of learning, uh, but Bob Hawke, with his now infamous response to our victory in the America's Cup, had given me my first political memory and one of my first debating defeats. Many more with my mother were to come. And of course, he gave me and very many other Australians, and not to mention people from across our region and the world, so much more. My generation, whose formative teenage years were that remarkable and somewhat maligned decade, the 1980s, had the privilege of growing up while Bob Hawke, his treasurer Paul Keating and his very talented government transformed our country. It did not matter that for most of us, Bob Hawke, the closest we ever got to him, was the nightly TV news. Because his presence, his personality, the pure Bob Hawkeness of him, meant that we knew that he was our Prime Minister, not just the Prime Minister. And that charismatic presence, which so many people have spoken of in this place today, was undoubtedly one of Bob Hawke's greatest gifts. But in my humble opinion, having that great gift was not the most important thing about him. In my view, it was what he harnessed that great gift to achieve that was most important and who and what he harnessed it for. And of course, that is the transformational policy reforms, which, as we all know, spanned the economic, the environment and the social policy realms, and which are on both the domestic and the international stage. As well as something else that he gave us, which I value to this very day, Bob Hawke demonstrated to Australians that our federal government could and should be compassionate and expansive, that it could not just talk about equality, but it could fight for it, particularly for those in our community who don't have the power or the resources to fight for it on their own, and that it could take everyone on a journey of bold and progressive change based on a love of Australia and Australians and an unwavering commitment to equality and justice. And for some of us who grow up or grew up in the magnificent 80s and whose conscious experience of politics and government was dominated by Bob Hawke, he gave us a lasting, enduring belief that that is what a federal government always, always should be and do. And for a lot of us, he gave us a beating Labor heart and we will forever be grateful. The first Labor member for Dunkley, the wonderful Bob Chinoweth, was first elected to the Australian Parliament in the 1983 Hawke slide. I know that Bob would have loved to have been able to speak today, and I'm pretty sure he would have told this story. Better than me, but I will do my best. Newly pre-selected to a seat we had lost in a by-election mere months earlier and thrown into a snap election. Bob Chinnawith received a visit from the great man early on in the campaign. How you doing, Bob? Hawkey inquired. Well, I'm really just hanging on to your coattails, to tell the truth, the ever humble Chinnawith confessed. The response? Don't worry, mate. So is everyone else. <laughs> I'm so glad, and I'm sure we're all so glad, that everyone was. We've heard a lot uh, today about how the Hawke government and Hawke personally protected Antarctica. 
It was the wonderful Bob um, Chinnaweth from my electorate of Dunkley, who years after he was first elected, went on a parliamentary delegation to Antarctica and had a personal epiphany. And in his words, sat there and said, we have magnificent places like this, we must protect them. And Bob, when he returned back to our community and then to Canberra, started a campaign you know, for and slightly against, but to influence the Hawke government and its cabinet ministers to reverse Australia's position as it was then on the Mineral Convention. Bob Chinnaworth um, lobbied cabinet ministers, but he also collected more than 20,000 signatures um, of Australian citizens and tabled them in this place, asking for Australia's position to change. And when that went before the Hawke cabinet, as we all know, Hawke took up that challenge. He took up that challenge and he fought for something that was right and something that was lasting and something that was a legacy. And my community are very proud of the role that our former Labor member played um, in that legacy. But it's not just a legacy of great policy. It is a demonstration, an illustration, of what Bob Hawke taught people my of my generation and some of our parents to expect from their federal government. That is, to identify what is important and what is right, and then to fight for it, even if fighting for it is hard, even if vested interests and the rules of the game say that you shouldn't, even if you have to battle to take others, including the electorate, with you. Bob Hawke was Australia's greatest prime minister. And while the generations that came under me, after me, after me didn't get the opportunity to live under his government, no doubt they are continuing to benefit from the reforms that were put in place to this day, and the generations to come will so do. The great Bob Hawke will always be loved, and he will be missed. His legacy will live on. It will live on in the way he changed our country and in the way he influenced the political philosophy of so many Australians, Australians that I am proud to say are like me. On behalf of my community of Dunkley and on behalf of Bob Shinnerworth, condolences to Bob Hawke's family and to all who loved him. I thank the